Welcome to Moto Trek. I'm Dusty Wessels, professional motorcycle instructor with West 38 Moto. Doing tight U turns on steep hills is difficult for any rider. I'm going to show you how to do it, but we're not going to start here. So let's start with some easy practice exercises. I've chosen a spot with a slight grade. Now one of the best places to practice tight U-turns is the pavement. But I chose this because it doesn't have marbly gravel on top of it, it's not wet. Man, you throw either one of those two conditions on top of this, completely changes the game. So if you're gonna practice, pick a high traction dirt environment. We're gonna practice tight U-turns standing up. Why do we stand up? I'm gonna quote one of my best friends, and favorite adventure rider coaches, Bill Dragu, the triple S's, sight, suspension, and steering. Stand up, you're gonna be able to see better. Suspension, you're gonna use your natural built-in suspension by bending your knees. Steering, all the steering off-road goes down to your feet on the pegs. Our human brain is constantly looking for balance when we're standing. Our brain is communicating with the nerve endings in our feet. We've got proprioceptors all throughout our body. A lot of them are in the bottom of our legs and they communicate. They tell us when to move and how to move and how to react with the bike. The most important thing to making new turns is turning your head. You've got to turn your head. You can't just watch the ground in front of your front wheel as you make the turn. Turn your head as far as you can to find your exit. Keep your shoulders up and keep them parallel with the bars as you turn the wheel in these turns. Momentum control is another really important piece to successful tight U-turns. It involves the clutch, brake, and throttle. You want very delicate inputs to each as you're operating the motorcycle. In the clutch, you're gonna be working in and out of the friction zone. Throttle, very, very little input on the throttle. Instead of a light switch, think of the throttle as a dimmer switch. Front brake, I know this is kind of a stressful point for a lot of people riding off-road, but the front brake has a lot of power in it, and if you operate it very delicately with one or two fingers, just pulling it back and forth really nice, it'll work really well always keep your weight outside in a turn when you're riding off-road. You could keep your weight neutral and lean the bike, that's fine. Really, the goal is to lean the bike, but you've gotta counteract that lean. The bike's leaning, you've gotta lean. You wanna shift weight at your hips. So if I'm turning left, I want slight or extreme hip weight out to the right. Same thing if I'm turning right, slight or extreme hip weight out to the left. What helps me with that a lot, especially from a stability standpoint, is my knees in the tank. So if I'm making that left turn, I can stick my knee in the tank and use it to kind of brace to help me hold that spot. How much weight should I shift, Dusty? Well, there are two things, really actually three things, that determine how much weight you should shift when you're turning a corner. Number one, how fast are you going? What's your speed? Number two, what's the radius that the trail is making you turn, or how tight have you decided to turn? And number three, what's the traction environment underneath you? The foot peg position I like to use, I go back and forth between my arches and the balls or the toes of my feet. I'm on my arches just in case I wanna drag my rear brake in one of the situations. Uh, I'm on my toes if I'm not gonna use my rear brake. If I'm okay with my front, it gives me a lot more flexibility and the ability to move and turn my feet towards the bike. So the orange cone represents the apex of the turn. When I practice on slight grade or hills, when I practice these tight U-turns, the first thing I do is get enough momentum. Now you can carry momentum with your throttle. If you have a DCT and you don't have a clutch, you're gonna have to carry and manage the whole momentum shift with your throttle. So carry enough speed that you think you can make it all the way through this turn. Now at the top, what I like to do here is pull my clutch in. That helps me manage my momentum. So I get a little more than what I think I need. If you've never practiced pulling your clutch in to manage your momentum up a hill or around a turn, try it. So when I go to initiate my turn, start to lean the bike to make this turn, I wanna push on the inside foot peg and pull on the bars a little bit. Now, is some of my weight going into the inside foot peg? Yes, it is. Foot pressure on the peg? Maybe a little of my inside hip weight, but I only want it there for enough time to get the bike to lean. And when the bike leans, I just let it move underneath me and I shift my hip weight back to neutral or slightly outside. As soon as I get the bike into the lean, now I need to turn my head and find my exit. Scanning my peripherals, I get my momentum managed, I get my weight shift managed, and about right here, about at the top of the apex, especially on a little bit of a grade, you're gonna go from carrying momentum 
with your weight outside and the bike staying somewhat uphill to now going downhill. So you've gotta be ready for that just a little bit. Maybe a little more weight shift to the outside to be ready for that. Also, pull your clutch in here and start to think of your front brake. So don't stab it, don't grab it, just nice easy pressure and squeeze just to manage the momentum so you don't fly outside the corner. At just past the apex, the bike is gonna be as leaned as far as it's gonna go. In other words, your contact patch is gonna have the least amount of traction available. So you have to be set up whether you're in an extreme weight shift or a straight up and down weight shift. Either one, keep your head turned, keep your eyes on the exit. The biggest thing to remember here is don't go to neutral. In other words, if my weight is shifted out here, don't think of your exit like, oh, I found my exit, I could just go straight up stand and go, no. Depending on the grade, if you move at all to the inside, that bike's gonna fall or it's gonna make you dab or it's gonna dip. The higher and steeper the hill, the harder you're gonna fall, the further away the ground is. So keep your weight shifted, stay there all the way until your front wheels go straight at your exit. So now, entering on a downhill turn, I'm gonna be going pretty slow and I'm gonna take it a little wider. Turn initiation is the same. I'm gonna press my right foot on the inside foot peg, move the handlebars a bit, keep myself neutral or just a bit outside, but get the bike to a comfortable lean angle that I can manage. As Soon as you do that, turn your head, look back at your exit, scan the terrain with your peripherals. This right here is very little input on the bike as you roll around this turn, you've got gravity pushing you. And now right here, you need to take it up. You need to let off the front brake, let the clutch out a little bit and start to add some throttle. Keep your eyes on the exit, keep your head turned, slowly roll through it, and as soon as your wheels go straight, that's when you go back to neutral and you make your exit. So now we're on a much steeper hill, the stakes are higher, all the techniques are the same, but you're in a much more dynamic environment. Things are gonna happen so much faster. Obviously with a steeper hill, you've got a lot more momentum you have to carry. And that momentum is gonna shut off fast. So if you haven't practiced the clutch in method up a hill, I would do so. And do wide ones at first, do really wide ones at first until you get to a point where you can do something tighter like this. So manage your momentum going up the hill, whether you've got DCT or not, get enough to carry you all the way up the hill. You're entering into the turn a little bit different than when you're on a slight grade or flat ground is you don't want to turn your head right away. The challenge with that is, especially on the grade, is it's going to drop the bike right in. As soon as you start to turn your head, the bike says, okay, let's go, and it's probably going to drop there. So don't turn your head right away. Instead, focus on the point where you've chosen to turn around. In this case, I've got an orange cone sitting out there. Not a whole lot of weight shift here. You're standing straight up on the bike coming up the hill. The weight shift is gonna happen when you get to the top of the apex and you exit. So I'm managing my momentum right here. This is where I like to pull my clutch in and start to coast. I'm on the front brake a little bit right here. I'm staring at the cone, shift your weight all the way to the outside, start to lean the bike. All my weight's on the uphill foot right now. As soon as I start to go downhill, boom, the pressure goes to my inside foot. I should still be way out here, extreme body weight shift to the outside knowing that now the bike's weight is pushing downhill, turn that front wheel into the line that you want, pick your head up and stand straight up. That's how you finish this turn. When you're practicing, if your front wheel moves on you too much, or if you have to dab here, you shifted your weight too fast. You didn't keep weight outside long enough. Riding tight U-turns takes a lot of skill, especially when you do it on a steep hill. Remember, head turn, head turn, head turn. Counterweighting, counterbalancing, weight shifting. Manage your momentum with delicate input to the controls. Start on the flat ground. This will give you a good idea of the traction environment underneath you. When you get comfortable making turns in that environment, then move up the hill more. Get a little steeper, get more comfortable with that. Pretty soon, you're gonna be more comfortable making that tight U-turn near the top of the hill. 